In the bustling world of technology, where innovation is a constant and gadgets are quickly becoming outdated, there's a growing problem that many might not notice amidst the allure of the latest electronic devices, electronic waste or e-waste. Now we have reached a point where the world is generating about 50 million tons of e-waste annually. That's a big number. So for a little bit of context, the Troll A natural gas drilling platform off the coast of Norway is widely considered to be among the heaviest things mankind has ever made. How much does that weigh? 1.2 million tons. So every year, the equivalent of 42 of those platforms is added onto the e-waste pile. Yeah. It is a huge problem and it is expected to get much worse as flexible electronics become more prevalent. These include exciting new innovations like robotics, wearable devices, health monitors, and an array of single use electronics that will revolutionize our daily lives. They already have, and they're not gonna stop anytime soon. But alongside these advancements, experts are already warning there may come an even more consequential avalanche of e-waste. This pressing issue raises a question. How do we balance technological innovation with environmental responsibility. Enter a groundbreaking development from MIT, the University of Utah, and META, a new material for flexible electronics. This material not only promises to revolutionize the manufacturing of electronic devices, but also holds the potential to mitigate the global crisis of e-waste. Imagine being able to recycle your smartphone into a new one, or turning discarded gadgets into fresh, innovative products without the hefty environmental cost. As astonishing as this might sound, the idea is not that far-fetched. So today, let's explore the current state of e-waste, the potential of the newly developed substrate material, and how this innovation could drastically reduce e-waste and usher in a new era of sustainable technology. My name's Joel, this is Octopart, let's gear up and dive in. <music> the urgency behind finding solutions for e-waste, we first have to grasp the magnitude of the problem. E-waste is a byproduct of our increasingly digital lives, from smartphones and laptops to wearable devices and household electronics. The devices that make our lives easier also contribute to a growing environmental issue. According to the Global E-Waste Monitor 2020, approximately 53.6 million tons of e-waste were generated globally in 2019. And this number is projected to reach 74.7 million metric tons by 2030. This increase is primarily driven by higher consumption rates of electronics, shorter life cycles, and limited repair options. And listen, the consequences of this e-waste are pretty profound. Many electronic devices contain hazardous materials such as lead, mercury, and cadmium. These can leach into the environment when they're not properly disposed of. And this not only affects the soil and water quality of wherever they happen to be leaching into, but it also poses serious health risks to humans and wildlife. Moreover, e-waste often ends up in landfills or is incinerated, and this releases those toxic substances right up into the air. This environmental impact is compounded by the fact that valuable resources such as silver, rare earth elements are completely lost when devices are discarded instead of recycled. And this is a pretty staggering loss because currently only about 20% of e-waste is formally recycled and the remaining 80% ends up in landfills or is informally recycled in ways that are hazardous to health and the environment. If you're interested in learning more about the challenges facing us when it comes to electronics materials, recycling those electronic materials and everything in that kind of world, check out this video for a deep dive on that topic. But wasting the materials isn't the only thing we risk with underdeveloped recycling practices. When in developing countries, informal recycling practices are common, where workers, including children, dismantle electronics to extract valuable components, often without any kind of proper safety measures in place. That means that these people, including children, are exposed to dangerous chemicals constantly. And this goes on to perpetuate a cycle of poverty, environmental degradation, and human despair that could all be prevented. As the global appetite for electronics continues to grow, so does the production of e-waste. And flexible electronics, while incredibly useful, 
and innovative are expected to contribute even more to this mounting problem due to their complex components and shorter lifespan. The demand for flexible electronics is driven by their applications in various sectors, but including healthcare, consumer electronics, wearable technology, bunch of other places. These devices are designed to be lightweight, portable, and adaptable. This makes them ideal for modern consumers who really do value convenience and functionality. The global poly image business projected to be worth $4 billion by 2030 highlights the widespread use of this material in electronics from the flexible cables inside our devices to aerospace applications. However, the current mainstay captain, a type of poly image, poses significant challenges due to its non-recyclability. Once used, these materials contribute to the growing piles of e-waste because they cannot be melted down or dissolved for reprocessing. And the manufacturing of these materials is also a slow and energy intensive process, further contributing to environmental degradation. This grim reality paints a picture of a future piled with even more electronic debris unless significant changes are made. Hi there, Joel here. You are just seconds away from learning about the incredibly exciting developments in flexible electronics that you came here for, but before I get there, do me a favor and like and subscribe if you're digging this video. Heck, leave a comment too. Research has actually shown that people who engage with Octopart's YouTube content are at least 75% more likely to have engaged with that content. And those are hard numbers, people. Okay, we all good? Back to the video. In light of all of these challenges, researchers from MIT, the University of Utah, and Meta have been working on a groundbreaking solution, a new flexible substrate material that promises to address the shortcomings of existing technologies. This new material is a light cured polymer that can be processed at room temperature, hardening quickly with exposure to ultraviolet light. This innovative approach not only speeds up that production process, but it also reduces the energy consumption typically required to produce traditional materials like cap. And something I really love about the development of this material is that it is a testament to the power of interdisciplinary collaboration. By bringing together experts in material science, engineering, and industry, the team has created a product that is both innovative and really practical. Unlike Captain, which is really difficult to melt or dissolve, this new material is designed to be recyclable. The researchers introduce subunits into the polymer backbone that can be rapidly dissolved using an alcohol and catalyst solution, allowing the valuable metals and components within electronic devices to be recovered and reused. The team created material that can be broken down into its original molecules, enabling the recovery of expensive electronic components. And this development not only enhances the sustainability of the manufacturing process, but it also provides a really viable solution for the end of life management of electronic devices, which we desperately need. The ability to recycle and reuse components is particularly important in the context of resource scarcity. Many of the materials used in electronics, such as rare earth elements, which we talked about earlier, are in limited supply and are subject to geopolitical tensions. I just talked about that on a recent episode of Circuit Pulse, if you want to check out a deeper combo about that. By developing a method to recover these materials from discarded devices, the new substrate material has the potential to reduce reliance on mining and mitigate the associated environmental and social impacts and also detach a little bit from those traditional mining sources, which may end up leading to a more stable environment for everybody. The implications of this new material extend far beyond its recycling capabilities, though. It could enable the creation of multi-layered electronic circuits, allowing for more complex and compact designs that are currently limited by the properties of Captain. This opens up really exciting new possibilities for the development of advanced electronic devices with enhanced functionalities that have recycling built in at the very bedrock of their design. Multi-layered circuits are, by the way, completely essential for modern electronics as they allow for the integration of multiple functions within a single device. This capability is particularly valuable in applications such as wearable technology and anything IoT where space and weight constraints are critical considerations. 
And the new materials ability to support these advanced architectures could drive innovation across a whole wide array of sectors, leading to the development of even more sophisticated and efficient devices. And that sounds incredible, right? You think that's incredible? Well, you're wrong, because here's what's incredible. This material might just integrate seamlessly with existing manufacturing infrastructures, which is an absolute game changer for the industry. I have to, I have to repeat myself. It might integrate seamlessly with existing manufacturing infrastructures by using a form of polyimide compatible with current production processes. Manufacturers can adopt this sustainable material without having to overhaul any of their operations. This compatibility ensures a smooth transition toward more environmentally friendly practices within the industry mind-blowing. The development of this new substrate material also aligns with the growing consumer demand for sustainable products across the board. Consumers are becoming much more conscious of the impact that their purchasing decisions have on the planet itself. And by adopting sustainable materials and practices, electronics manufacturers can differentiate themselves in a competitive market and appeal to environmentally conscious consumers. Furthermore, the ability to recover valuable components from e-waste could have significant economic benefits. The recovery and reuse of rare earth minerals and microchips can alleviate supply chain shortages, which is a big deal in the modern landscape, and reduce reliance on mining for critical resources, as I mentioned earlier. As the demand for electronic devices continues to rise, this innovation presents an economically viable solution for addressing both environmental and resource-related challenges. You know, the introduction of this new material could also spur policy changes and regulatory developments aimed at promoting sustainable practices in the electronics industry more broadly. Governments and regulatory bodies may even implement incentives and standards to encourage the adoption of recyclable materials, further driving the transition toward a more sustainable industry. Wouldn't be the first time it's happened, probably wouldn't be the last time either. This could create a positive feedback loop as it has in the past where increased adoption of sustainable practices leads to further innovation and regulatory support. The development of this new material represents a significant step toward a sustainable future for technology. By addressing the challenges associated with traditional flexible electronics, researchers have really paved the way for a new generation of devices that prioritize environmental responsibility. The integration of recyclable materials into the production process is a crucial aspect of achieving this goal. And listen, as companies and consumers become more aware of the environmental impact of electronic waste and just how much e-waste there is and how much there will be if we don't act, the adoption of sustainable materials and practices is gonna become increasingly important. The work done here by MIT, University of Utah, and Meta exemplifies the potential for collaboration between academia and industry to drive meaningful change in the fight against e-waste. Looking ahead, the adoption of this new material could really inspire further innovation in sustainable materials and processes and be a game changer for a bunch of different reasons. All of this could improve the recyclability and sustainability of electronic devices, leading to a more circular economy, which is a buzzword these days in the electronics industry. And this shift could have far reaching implications, not only for environmental sustainability, but also for economic growth and job creation. So again, for a lot of reasons, it's really, really great that this new material is in the news cycle right now. But what do you think? Is this new process the key to significantly reducing e-waste in the years ahead? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know. My name's been Joel. This has been Octopart. See you next time.